Hello everyone and welcome to another screencast presentation taking a look at Twinmotion 2019 again. My name is Mitchell Parsonage. I'm an application engineer at Moderna Design Centers in Cape Town. This video is it, it's basically come about as a spin-off to my previous Twinmotion video that I did which I will link in the description. Um, and it was just a request for a bit of information how Revit and Twinmotion actually work together. Um, so I'm going to go through some very basic things today, just hopefully to provide some understanding as to how these two applications connect to one another and some of the things that you can do with it. All right, so I'm going to start off inside of Revit with a form that I have uh, previously created. So this form was actually created using Dynamo which is another nice to know. Um, you can take from Dynamo, bring it into Revit, and from Revit you can take it into Twinmotion. So you can you know, really create some interesting forms. Um, and I'm gonna show you how you can embellish this quite a lot. I also have a pre-created Twinmotion scene that I've set up using this form as the main structure. So. I'm going to go from the beginning firstly, and then I'm going to show you the pre-created pre scene as well, uh, just so you can see the differences. So the first thing is I'm going to launch to InMotion. Always launch to InMotion from the actual product manager. Okay, I've actually got a shortcut um, in my toolbar or in my taskbar at the bottom of my screen, but that doesn't launch the most up-to-date one. So I always just go to my product manager and just launch it from here. Okay, and I'm gonna go back to Revit, and I'm just gonna leave this exactly as it is, and I just wanna take this through to Twinmotion. So, firstly, to do that, we've got two options. Okay, we can go to our Twinmotion tab at the top over here, which you can uh, download and install again from the product manager, and we've got two methods. We've got a live dynamic link, and then we've got an export option as well, which will produce an FBX file for us. Okay, so this, this just depends on what you're trying to do. Um, I always generally start my model uh, with the live dynamic link so that when it's in twin motion I can continue to make changes to my model and I can update my twin motion file because that was always an issue before the dynamic link came into play was that you know if you wanted to change something about your model you would have to export and import you know every single time you did even the simplest change to the model so twin motion is your final final resting place for your model you know what I mean once it's into in motion you don't generally make additional changes but with the dynamic link it's more easy to actually perform changes to your model so I'm just gonna select C into in motion and I'll go through these two uh, in just a bit but basically do you have an existing twin motion file or is it a new project so I'm just gonna go new project for this one say okay okay and then that starts to synchronize so this won't take uh, too much time at all. Obviously, depending on the size of your project, again, size is always a factor. So, the larger it is, the longer the sync is going to take. Um, but yeah, this one shouldn't take too much time. Right, and it has come through into Twin Motion. All right. So the nice thing about this dynamic link, as I mentioned, is that if I decided that I wanted to actually make a change to something. You know, so maybe I go back to my Revit project and I just decide, okay, I'm just going to put in a desk very, very simply over here, just so I can show you. Okay, so I put that desk in there. Now, if I go back to Twin Motion, that's not going to happen straight away. Okay, and, and again, this was the issue before is that I would have to export this Revit model and import it into here. But what I can do now is I can just, again, select C in Twin Motion. Okay, and it just resynchronizes it and it adds any additional items that you've added to your model. So not necessarily a hundred percent live link in the sense that as you add information, it doesn't automatically update in Twin Motion, but it's literally just a one-click procedure, which is really nice and really easy. Okay, so the first thing I want to chat about is just how Twin Motion deals with Revit materials, or, or how you in twin motion, how you assign materials uh, to items and what the behavior is based off of. Okay. So twin motion works with materials. What I mean by that is in Revit, 
any form over here, any shape, any family, anything that I've got in here that has the same material is going to respond identically in twin motion. So for example, if I had two floor slabs sitting here in twin motion and they are different materials in Revit, then I can assign different materials to them in twin motion. If they are the same material, then twin motion is going to see them as basically one item and whatever material I assign to one, it will assign to the other. All right, so for example, if I create some additional desks over here that are exactly the same, okay, and I go and I update my twin motion file, okay, now these desks are identical in Revit. They're the same family, the same type, they're all the same material. So that means that in twin motion, when I apply materials to one, it is going to apply materials to all three of them. As you can see, they're all changing. Okay, so that's the first thing we need to understand about how Twinmotion deals with, with materials and items that come from Revit. So if I wanted to change that behavior, what I'm going to have to do is change the material of these desks. Okay, so, you know, if I wanted exactly the same desk, but to appear in two different ways, I'm just going to create another one right next to it over here. And this new one, I'm just going to go into my type properties. I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm just going to set it to just the default material. Okay, so just the by category material. So I'm just going to change out all of those for by category and I'm going to say okay, which is just your generic generic material in Revit. Okay, this gray tone that comes with stuff like generic walls and things like that. So if I now take this into twin motion and I update my twin motion file again. Okay, I'll, I can see straight away that there is a difference here between the materials and if I select materials and I assign it to one desk, notice how it doesn't affect the other desk next to it. Okay. So that's the first thing uh, when it comes to assigning materials to things that come from Revit inside of Twinmotion. You need to make sure that the various items that you have here, if you want them to be different materials, you're going to have to create them as different materials inside of Revit. Okay, for example, this is a in-place family inside of Revit, these, these sort of fins over here. Okay, they're all created in one sketch. So if I try and apply a material to one of them, it's going to apply to all of them. Okay, and again, if I wanted to change that, I would have to go back and, you know, break the connection between all of these fins by creating a whole bunch of different materials or types. Okay, so you, you, while you're designing in Revit, it's actually nice to th think uh, a bit in the future about how you're going to deal with these items inside of Twinmotion, okay, because that's going to dictate how you're going to actually go through the modeling process in Revit. Okay, so if you didn't want to do this, however, okay, if you didn't want this live link from Revit, um, because obviously you don't have to, uh, I'm just going to remove this. Oh, sorry, I actually can't remove it because it's uh, it's linked in. But my other option is to go back to Revit and to just go to my export option up here, okay, where I have a little bit of control over the things that I can uh, do inside of uh, Revit. Okay, this gives me slightly more control over how I export this FBX file. Okay, here are all my various options. I define all of them as I need to, select export, and then I'm going to end up with an FBX file, which I can then just import into Twinmotion using my import tool over here. Okay, so I have already done this previously, so I could go to my desktop, there is my FBX file, and I'm going to open that up. Okay, uh, obviously it's going to import it here kind of on top of itself. Okay, so not really too important, I'll just move it out the way just so you can see. Okay, it comes through basically exactly the same way. Now the reason why I bring up this method is just because what I've found is that this live connection can sometimes be a little bit unstable. Okay, for example, what happened with this particular project is what I was doing is that these in-place families that I created over here, okay, which I assigned a lot of lighting to and I'll, I'll show you the final product of this in just a second. But every time I added these in and I updated my twin motion file, it would crash. Okay, so there was a little bit of instability there. And what I ended up doing, and just to give you the workarounds as well, how you can get around these sorts of things, is that I ended up modeling this 
item in Revit. Okay. I copied it to my clipboard. Okay. I went and started a new architectural project. Into which I then pasted okay, to exactly the same place. Okay, and then what I did here is I just exported this file as an FBX. So I didn't do a live link into Twinmotion because obviously that's going to over overwrite the rest of my project. What I did is just go up to export okay, and F exported an FBX file, which I then imported into Twinmotion, which is why I've got these fins over here. So these fins are actually a separate item from the rest of the project. But that's just a way to show you uh, that you can get around these issues. If Twinmotion does uh, crash, you can still use these workarounds and they work fine. Um, and yeah, I haven't had any problem with this particular method. And the solution is not very difficult either. You know, just create it in your initial Revit project where you've got the rest of your geometry and then just isolate that piece that you've just created into a separate Revit project and export that as an FBX file, which will come into Twinmotion. Okay. So, um, again, just to show you um, some of the things that could potentially happen with this dynamic link again over here. So I'm just going to relaunch Twinmotion. Because um, if you already have a Twinmotion file, as I do, you can go to your Twinmotion plugin. You can select C in Twinmotion. Okay, and then in Twinmotion, it's going to ask whether you have an existing project or a new project. Okay, so in this case, I can go to existing project. I can go to where I know that my twin motion file is. Okay, and I can say open. So I'm basically linking those two. I'm taking that Revit model and I'm linking it into a pre created twin motion file that I did previously. Okay, so in this situation, um, it has been giving me some issues which is another thing that I want to just mention. Even if you start with a live link, I would recommend saving your twin motion file as a normal, just a twin motion file that you can open at any time that you want. Okay, so you see, this is the message that I receive when I'm trying to resync these two things together. Okay, so what I can do here rather is just launch twin motion. And instead of doing the live link in Revit, you know, because I don't really need that anymore. Now that I've, I've modeled everything in Revit the way that I need to, I can just continue with the twin motion file. I don't really need to go back to Revit anymore. And if I want to add some additional geometry, I can do what I did in the workaround when I just create the items in a separate Revit project and I just import them in as an FBX file. Okay, but what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go to open. I'm going to navigate to that file again. And then I'm just going to open up the actual twin motion file. Okay, so this has got nothing to do with Revit anymore. There's no live link over here. So, you know, this is just the scene file. If I want to continue embellishing it, giving it more lighting, assigning materials, creating whatever it is that I'm trying to create. Okay, so this is uh, the finished product that I actually created with materials, objects, people, uh, vegetation, lighting, all of that stuff assigned to it. Okay, and also just a couple of things that I that I want to go through over here. Um, primarily just one, because this is one that I've seen around the internet quite a bit, um, and it is to do with your weather situation. Okay, so if I if I change my weather to actually have it rain in my project, okay, and right now I'm inside, and you can see what's happening is that it's actually raining inside of my building. Okay, now I spent a bit of time digging around trying to actually find what this is. And at the end of the day, it's a very, very simple setting that just needs to be adjusted. And it's your quality setting. So if I go to my little menu bar over here and I go to preferences, and I switch across to quality. Okay, I have got four quality settings. Low and medium will allow rain to pass through materials and solid elements for performance reasons. Okay. Anything from high onwards is going to stop the particle effects from actually passing through the materials and through the objects. So all you have to do here to get it to stop raining in your project is literally just switch it 
to a high or an ultra setting. Okay, obviously, this does take quite a toll on your computer's performance, so you do need quite a, a decent graphics card to, to have a good time here in Twin Motion, okay? Or else things are gonna be quite laggy. Even my computer, if I switch it to high, my computer, the performance drastically um, slows down. Okay, so I'll leave it on medium and I'll just move around a bit. Okay, you can see that I don't have too much lag or delay or anything like that. But as soon as I switch it to high, firstly, you'll notice that it, it will stop raining in, inside my building. Okay, still raining outside, but you can see it's it's much more more laggy and jumpy. Okay, because it is like quite a few things are changing, right? And you can see the rain particle effects out here. So you do need quite a powerful graphics card to have these higher settings, but if you do have one, then it's great because you know these high and ultra qualities, they really increase the quality of everything. Materials, lighting, reflections, all those kinds of things look a lot better when it's actually set to a higher quality. Okay, but for my reasons, I just work with it on medium the entire time, and when I want to actually render, I then switch it to high or to ultra, do my rendering, and then switch it back. Okay, just because it's a lot easier um, to control, and I don't have any lag or any jumpiness here. Okay, so those are the basic things that I wanted to to just chat about. Is a little bit about how Revit and Twin Motion actually link together and how they interact with one another. Okay, so the, the, the most important thing to remember is just the way that you assign materials is based on the materials that it comes from in Revit. Okay, so if you want separate items to have separate materials in Twin Motion, they need to have separate materials inside of Revit. And also just remember that every item that has that material, regardless of what the item is, will receive that material inside Twin Motion as well. You know, so if I have a wall, a floor, and a fin that all share the same material, if I make a change to one of them, it's gonna affect all three of those items, okay? Because they share the same Revit material. So that's how Twinmotion groups things together. Okay, so that's everything that I wanted to go through. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you have any other topics that you'd like me to create videos for, also let me know that, um, and I'll be happy to help. Uh, until next time, thanks very much.